Hey everybody, welcome back to Foundations in Faith, continuing to walk through those foundational beliefs of Christianity, uh, as well as Lutheranism specifically, walking through this great giant book, the Book of Concord, um, mostly through the Apology of the Augsburg Confession. We talked about what that document is quite a while ago, so if you're uh, not, not quite sure, not remembering, you can go back and look at some of the past videos and take a look at that. Uh, but today we are talking about two kind of really central pieces of the Reformation, uh, central for Luther, central for us, continuing on to today, and what it meant that we split from the Catholic Church and why we split from the Catholic Church back in Luther's time. We are talking about confession and repentance. And so, as I said, this was a central struggle for Luther as he learned, as he walked through what it means to be in the Scriptures, especially as he walked through Romans, learned about justification and God's forgiveness and law and gospel, confession and repentance was something that really weighed heavily on him in the way the Catholic Church practiced at that time. So the Catholic teaching at that time was that all sins that could be remembered should be confessed in order to receive forgiveness for them. And then as you confess those sins, satisfactions had to be made. These were things such as saying Hail Mary, saying the Lord's Prayer. Um, indulgences came from this practice as you could show your contrition as you gave money to the church. You could buy forgiveness in that way. Um, and so all of your sins had to be remembered. All of your sins had to be confessed in order for those sins to be forgiven. What wasn't confessed then wasn't forgiven. And it's been said that uh, Luther was so burdened by this weight, so burdened by trying to remember all of his sins and confess all of his sins, that he would spend hours upon hours in that confessional booth with a priest trying to remember and confessing all of these sins to the point where the priest that he was confessing to would say, uh, you've done enough, you know, go do, your, go do your reparations, go do your satisfactions, that's enough. So he was burdened with the thought that forgiveness depended on him, that forgiveness depended on his ability to remember and confess his sins. And this was kind of actually in accordance with the Roman Catholic teaching at the time from a, a mandate that's called the Omnis Utrisque, I don't speak Latin, so I don't know if I'm saying that correctly, but that was a uh, decree from Gregory the Ninth that was made in connection with the Lateran IV Council in 1215, 1215 uh, which said that all confession must be made to a priest for all Catholic laity once a year, at least once a year, and that the confessing person must diligently try to remember all the sins they've committed and confess them. So this is coming all the way from the top, all the way from the Pope down, saying you have to remember your sins, you have to do your best to remember all of your sins, confess them to a priest, and then by doing the satisfactions, your sins were forgiven through that. And as Luther struggled through scriptures, and as he struggled through Romans again especially, and looked through what scripture said, that didn't line up with what he saw scripture saying. It didn't line up that we had to remember and confess every single one of our sins, and it really didn't line up that we had to make satisfaction for our sins. So the Lutheran teaching is quite different on confession and repentance and what all of those things. Now we still hold that confession is necessary. We are called within scripture to confess our sins. Uh, Jesus, as well as many of the New Testament writers, they give the command to confess and repent. I think of 1 John 3, we say this quite often within our services, especially the uh, late service in our traditional liturgy of confession absolution. And we say it together, if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we are called to confess our sins. While we make an effort to remember and confess specific sins, especially those ones that are weighing us down, it's not necessary that we say them in order to receive forgiveness. And the, the authors of the um, Apology to the Augsburg Confession say this quite clearly. He says, therefore, we maintain that the enumeration of sins is not necessary by divine mandate. What he's saying is it's not necessary that you list every single sin. Scripture doesn't speak that way. You don't have to list every single sin to receive forgiveness of that. And he goes on to explain, we do not want to impose a, ne a necessity upon the consciences of people. He's saying confession and absolution, confession and forgiveness of sins, should not be something that weighs people down. It shouldn't be like it was for Luther, where we're terrified if we forget to confess a sin and we're burdened by what confession and absolution is. Rather, it's something that frees us. Rather, it's something that um, uplifts us and sustains us and gives us life. And if we really look at it, the scriptures speak of, even if we wanted to, we could never, never list all of our sins. 
Psalm 19:12, uh, one quick example says, who can detect their errors? Speaking to oftentimes we sin and we don't even know that we're sinning. We're just not aware that we're breaking God's commands. We're not aware that we're hurting this person. We're, we're not in control of our thoughts enough to say, okay, I'm hating my brother through this thought, whatever it might be. We sin countless times throughout the day that we don't even realize our sins. So all of that to come together and the Lutheran writers, the Lutheran um, <coughs> authors of the Apology would say that confession and thereby forgiveness or absolution of our sins is not dependent upon us. It's not dependent on our ability to remember all of our sins. Rather, it's dependent upon God and dependent upon his grace and his mercy for us. And so for Lutherans, the parts of repentance, the parts of confession, are contrition and faith. That's how they lay it out here in the Apology. And this is the very voice of the gospel. That's what the authors say, the very voice of the gospel, that we receive the forgiveness of sins by faith. So how do we define those terms really quickly in the context of forgiveness? We would say contrition, uh, the authors of the Apology say, contrition is the genuine terror of the conscience that feels God's wrath against sin and grieves that it has sinned. So it's a recognition that we have sinned, but it's more than just a recognition. It's realizing we've sinned against God Almighty. It's realizing that the wrath over sin, the punishment of sin, is rightfully ours. That God is just in punishing sin in our lives. And we grieve over that and we fear God's wrath over that. That's the first part, realizing we've sinned, realizing what it means that we've sinned in contrition. But then the second part is the beautiful part. That's the faith. The faith that on account of Christ, our sins are freely forgiven. And so that wrath and that grief and that punishment that should be ours, that justly is ours, is given to Christ as he gives us his righteousness. So this faith in Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sins that he won for us, instead of being something that tears us down and pushes us to um, being guilty or, or being uh, burdened under our sins in the act of confession, this faith instead uplifts, sustains, and gives life to the contrite, to the person confessing their sins. We see this all over in Scripture, especially in Romans. And Luther quotes Romans. Romans chapter 5 says, Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God. Since we are justified, since our, our sins are forgiven, since we have righteousness by faith, we now have peace with God. That faith is faith in Jesus Christ, faith in his work on the cross. And it's this faith, faith that receives the forgiveness of sins. So as Lutherans, we would say all of this uh, means that confession, repentance, uh, contrition, all of this is vital to our lives. Vital to our lives so that we can hear again the forgiveness of sins that Christ has won for us. So that we can hear again that beautiful gospel message of the cross, that we are forgiven, that we have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. But we don't have to remember all of our sins and confess all of our sins privately to a pastor, to a priest, in order to receive that forgiveness. Again, our forgiveness isn't based on ourselves. It's not based on if we can remember, if we can confess, rather on faith that God has forgiven our sins, even the sins that we're not aware of. And oftentimes, uh, in, in talking with Catholic friends and all that, they say that our confession and our absolution, it just it doesn't go far enough. We don't really feel the weight of our sin as we sit in church and for two minutes we say, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all the sins with which I've grieved you. But when we stop and when we think about it, that's really what we're doing. That's really what we're doing in confession is saying, I can't acknowledge all of my sins. I don't even know all of my sins. And yet even those ones I'm not aware of, God, you are aware of, you know of them. And through faith, I know that you've forgiven those sins. And thank you for that forgiveness. So that's what we call kind of corporate confession and forgiveness or corporate confession absolution as the pastor leads it up front in the church. But there's also a very beautiful tradition and right within, yes, the Lutheran church of private confession as well. This isn't practiced very often anymore. Uh, more often than not, it kind of takes place organically, naturally, you might say, between two people that have a close relationship. Um, so another way to say that is most often I don't have people coming into my office and saying, forgive me, Pastor, for I have sinned or something like that. Um, 
rather it's through discussion and they say, yeah, I'm really struggling with this. And then my answer is, hey, I get your struggle, and guess what? God's forgiven that sin. God's going to uplift you and strengthen you to continue to fight that sin. Um, so the private confession absolution takes place all the time. And it doesn't have to be between a pastor and a layperson. It doesn't have to be between uh, someone of authority in the church and a congregant member. It happens all the time within the congregation. As you go to your friends, as you go to the people that you're close to, and you say, hey, I'm struggling with this. So I've got this sin in my life. And they pronounce forgiveness into your life as they tell you again about Jesus Christ. That's beautiful. That's private confession and absolution. It happens all the time. That's what we're called to. Not to sit in a booth with a pastor or a priest and hear that forgiveness and have to go get indulgences or anything like that. No, to speak the gospel into each other's lives. To speak forgiveness into each other's lives. Now I say all of that, and I also put before you that we do have a right of private confession within the Lutheran Church. A right of private confession and absolution. That would look like one of you coming into my office and we would open up the Lutheran hymnal and it's got a, a small liturgy. It takes... I don't know, five minutes maybe to walk through if you walk through the whole thing and you go really slowly. Um, it doesn't happen often, but i got to tell you, it is a beautiful, beautiful thing to experience. During my time at seminary, I don't know about Pastor Steve, but uh, Vicar Josh, who just left, he spoke about it as well. We were actually required to go to private confession and absolution with the um, chaplain on campus just in order to experience it, just in order to see what it's like to be on, on the one side and then as we go into the church to be on the other side. But it is absolutely beautiful to confess one of the sins that's burdening you, one of the sins that's weighing you down to a brother in Christ and to have him say, hey, God has forgiven this specific sin in your life. God has spoken forgiveness over that. God has defeated that sin. You have forgiveness for that sin. So the reason private confession and absolution is so beautiful is it allows the person you're confessing to to speak towards that specific sin. It allows God to speak towards that specific sin, and you hear forgiveness for that sin. So what we would say is, uh, usually if you're burdened by a specific sin, if you have something that you're just struggling with and you're feeling guilt and shame and just defeated by this sin, that's a beautiful time to have this right of private confession and absolution. As you come in, as you hear that forgiveness, it really is strengthening and uplifting to hear the word of God about that specific sin and the forgiveness that he's won for that sin. So if you are struggling with a specific sin, I invite you to come into my office, come into Pastor Steve's office, ask for that right of private confession. Um, if, you know, if you're worried about confidentiality, we are required to confidentiality. The seal of the confessional is what it's called. Um, we can actually be in legal trouble if what you confess to us comes out because of us. So there's, there's privacy there. There's um, the beauty of it doesn't have to get out, but you can still hear that forgiveness. I encourage you to reach out to Pastor Steve or myself if that's something you desire. One last note uh, before we finish up for the day then is that we do not require satisfactions. We don't require that you go out and say 10 Lord's Prayers. We don't require that you pray your rosary or say Hail Marys or give donations to the church, um, kind of like indulgences, anything like that. We would believe, we do believe, teach, and confess that ultimate satisfaction has already been made through Jesus Christ. Nothing we can do would add to that forgiveness that he's already won for us. Now, there is fruit that comes from repentance and contrition and absolution. There is a change in life that comes from true contrition, true repentance. As we turn away from our sin and turn towards God, that of course has a change in how we act. And if your sin is being angry and you turn away from your anger, you're going to act more peaceably in that way. So there is fruit that comes from it. We don't require, uh, like I said, anything like donations or, or saying a certain amount of prayers um, because we believe that Jesus has already made that ultimate satisfaction for us on the cross. That's what we've got uh, for confession, repentance, absolution, all that good stuff. It is a deep topic. It was probably 50 pages within this book that I condensed down to uh, 15 minutes here for you this morning. But if you want to talk more, if you have more questions, I do invite you to call me, reach out to me. Uh, email me is probably the best way, the easiest way. That's Pastor Andrew at S-T-P-A-U-L-B-O-C-A dot com. Pastor Andrew at St. Paul Boca dot com. Uh, I'd love to be in conversation with you. You can also leave comments on the YouTube video just below here. I'll be checking those from time to time as well. 
Next week, uh, we're going to journey into uh, somewhat of a contentious area, human traditions. Human traditions within the church, human traditions within worship services, human traditions, what their place is, what their role is, where they're beneficial, where they're not beneficial. I'll have a lot of fun next week. But until then, I hope you have a wonderful week. God bless. Stay healthy.